the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. I had a fellow ask me not long ago, he said, if you were in a tournament and you needed one fish to limit out and you didn't have much time, where would your can't miss spot be? Well, I'd have to say a boat ramp. They're made out of concrete. They stretch well out into the lake. They slope downward, thereby making a clear pathway from deep water to shallow. They receive sunlight most of the day, which encourages the growth of algae on a hard surface, which attract bait fish throughout the warmer months. Crawfish also use the cubby holes in the riprap along each side of the ramp. Bass are creatures that can and do learn from experience, and bass learn to feed on those places that bluegill, minnows, and shad use, simply because these places provide an easy meal and possibly that extra fish to limit you out. In reservoirs that undergo a winter drawdown, the ramp may extend from five to 25 feet or more on out into the lake. Normally on a ramp, you'll find riprap rock stretching out along the edge of the concrete into deeper depths. That's one right at the boat. Right at the boat. And he's all, whoo, he's all hooked up. I'll tell you something about this, these baits. You ain't got to worry about, worry about hooking them. Buddy, you are hooked forevermore. Look at here. I got him here, I got him here, and I got him here. There we go. Toodaloo. You know, with, we're talking about ramps. With, you know, with all the rocks and the concrete, algae will grow on the hard, rough surface. And what this does, it attracts one of Bass's favorite foods shed and menace which feed on the algae and bass follow to feed on the bait. All right, speaking of boat ramps, here's another short question about them. Doesn't all the traffic around a launch ramp spook the bass? Well, my answer to this is only to a degree. Sure, bass holding in shallow water may be spooked by heavy traffic, but they grow accustomed to the usual flow of traffic overhead. I suppose it's like learning to sleep after they built a railroad behind your house. The first train might wake you up, but eventually you learn to snooze right through the commotion. Did you realize that lower gear ratio reels work best for deep water cranking? Yep, they do. Let me tell you why. Lower gear ratio means slower retrieve speeds and more power. What it does, it forces the angler to fish a crankbait at a slower speed. It maximizes depth and lure performance. Lower gear ratio takes less effort to retrieve with higher resistant lures. It causes the angler less fatigue. They're ideal for better lure action and speed. Now, slower retrieves cause the lure to achieve greater depth by allowing the bait to work vertically. This provides a more deliberate, natural bait action as it digs the bottom and bumps structure as it's moved along. Finally, it keeps the bait in the strike zone so much longer. I've seen a fish just in the water. There's one. I've seen, one, seen them in the water just Come on around, Buster. You through? 
to come up here. Now, I threw that thing one time just talking about reeling it straight while I was demonstrating. And then the next time I just threw it and I was talking about how to stop it and I threw it in the same spot. And when I was stopping it right then, that's when this fish hit it. In bodies of water where shad, bluegill, and crawfish are the predominant forage, I'll normally do better with short, fat-shaped crankbaits. Now, in lakes where herring, smelt, shiners, and chub are the main forage, I have much better success with long, narrow baits that have a slimmer profile. I still experiment with both, however, in every lake I fish. That's a good one. You gotta get me up, old boy. Yep, 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 it's a good one. It's a nice one. You little strong rascal. Easy now, old gal. Hey. What a nice fish. Ooh. Yes, sir. What a nice fish. Goodbye. I've heard many avid crankbait fishermen say that you can reach maximum depth control when using small line size. Well, you heard right. Especially if you're using a long enough rod and make a long enough cast. Depth is dictated by line size, not in regards to pound test. The larger the diameter, the more depth driving friction is created as the line is pulled through the water. Disregard the line manufacturer's line strength claim and consider the actual diameter of the line. It's written right here on there. Now, I know what you're thinking and you're right. Catching a good sized bass with eight to 10 pound test line in and around cover is a difficult situation. A big fish needs to be finessed. Be sure your drag is set properly and the hooks on your crankbait are extremely sharp. So there's no doubt you're running through your mind right now thinking, I'm going to miss some big fish. Well you are, but look how many more you'll miss by not getting your lure down to their depth level. Good luck. of the boat. Where are you going, bud? Every one of them want to go under the boat. Every one of them. Come on back out of there. Up them out of there, buster. All right. Okay, boy. All right, got you. That's a pretty little fish. About three and a half pounds. Okay, buddy boy, we'll turn you loose. Boy, we've had a great day. But we gotta get out of here. In closing, let me say, there's no magic crankbaits. 
that'll catch bass every day, everywhere. But if you consider the characteristics we've mentioned as part of your angling game plan, it's a sure bet you'll be well on your way to some great fishing. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.